people, we are we are uh, starting with our elements. We're week four. We're starting with our elements and the elements of design, and we're going to be on the elements for the next several several weeks. I think it's five or six weeks. We're going to be talking about uh, about these elements. Um, the elements of design really they're they're not in any particular order, so they're not ranked as most important to least important. And I'm going to start with line um, because line is the foundation of the other things that we're going to talk about so you kind of can't you can't talk about shape and space right if we, if we look at our garment here we can't talk about shape and space without talking about line um, and in in line shape and space will build on texture and pattern and value and then we have our two big guns down here color and light so we're going to spend quite a bit of time talking about color and a good about amount of time talking about light and you know, these two, especially these two, uh, color and light, um, there's extensive research, on, you know, there's color theory that explains, you know, why, uh, why people are, 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 are drawn to certain colors and the, um, the emotional response that those, that those, that they receive out of colors from the warm category, the neutral category. Um, so we'll, we'll talk about that. And when we talked about last week, when we were talking about defining aesthetic experiences, we talked about how so much of it is connected to our brain, right? To those pleasure centers in our brain. So these are sensory experiences, right? They're sensory experiences. So that's where we're going to start with line. It builds, uh, it sets the foundation for the other, the other topics that we're, we're going to talk about. So moving forward, like I said, we're going to talk about line. And I just want to be clear. I'm going to be moving myself around <laughs> on these slides. I want to be clear, when we talk about line, um, we're talking about line in two in two ways. We will be talking about line as the formation of a pattern. We're really going to be talking about line as a as a beginning and an end point. So if we look at just these in, in, you know, the background of this of this PowerPoint, you know, line has a, a beginning and an end point, right? So we'll be talking about, about that in conjunction with um, developing your design aesthetic and garment construction, right? Um, line generally is always longer than it is wider, right? So again, if we look at this, um, you know, it has a, a starting point and a stopping point that's long, but the width isn't nearly as long as the length. So um, it's really important for you to, to understand how you build proportion, right? How you build proportion on, on that line. Um, on the line. So that's what we're going to be talking about. And then, you know, line is the, um, it's the component that builds a two-dimensional shape. Next week when we get to shape, we'll, we'll see that shape is two-dimensional, but line helps build the two-dimensional shape, which then helps build the three-dimensional shape, which is form, right? So it's really important that we have this, this basic understanding down before we Add those other terms to the lexicon, right? Add those other terms to our to our fashion fashion terminology. So, um, so like I said, line is just the um, you know it has a, it has a stopping and a starting point. Uh, it is longer than it is um, it's longer than it is wide. Um, and when we get to shape, like I said, it, they really are they're they're inner interconnected right so um, line is the edge of this three-dimensional form we'll talk about when we get to shape when we get to shape next week okay so these are the objectives what are the objectives for this week okay the objectives not necessarily in this order <laughs> okay um, we're going to talk about the types of lines that a designer will use in a garment so we'll talk about you know curved and meandering um, we'll talk about um, you know straight we'll talk about vertical versus horizontal um in that we'll talk about the formal qualities expressive qualities and symbolic qualities of, of line and remember when we talked about defining aesthetic experiences we talked about these same things formal expressive and symbolic qualities of aesthetic experience so we'll we'll dive into those um as well we'll talk about the ways in which designers implement lines and when i say designers let's let me change that designers and merchants because this class is um, design aesthetics for fashion and interiors and some of you are designers and some of you are merchants so in building your design aesthetic for your own designs right we'll talk about ways that you implement designs in building your own design aesthetic aesthetic 
for the way you shop for others. So clients um, and or the company that you'll ultimately work for, we'll, we'll talk about um, having that understanding of line is really important um, in understanding the aesthetic of, of that company, right? Um, and we'll also talk about how designers and merchants employ line direction and line quality in the design. So those are the objectives for uh, for this this module. We won't get that we won't get that far in this piece, but we get all of those in this lecture. Okay, so let's move forward. Right. So again, um, line is the most familiar of all the design elements, right? Because it is um, it's a point. It's a point that starts, right? I want to say it starts here and it, it stops there. Oops, I moved, I moved us forward. Sorry. Uh, it stops and starts. It's the most familiar of all the design elements. It's also the most versatile um, because, like I said, it helps build shape, which is two-dimensional, and these two-dimensional shape helps build form. So you can't do that without this starting and stopping point of this line, the starting, stopping, right? You can't do you can't do that, right? Um Line has also been called, it's a, a, a point in motion, and um, a line is created on the edge of every object, right? The, ed the edge of every object um, is, is created by a line, so it's really important that um, when we're working on our design aesthetic that we understand those, um, that we understand this, this, these definitions, okay? All right, so moving forward. Let's talk about the types of line, and there are actually two types of lines, right? One is actual, and the other is implied. And an actual line really exists in the space. And what that means is there are lines that come out. Let me move myself again. There are lines that um, that form the layout of a structure, right? So um, I have on I have a Ralph Lauren shirt. Um, tuxedo boyfriend cut shirt today and um, there are lines that make up this construction right so there is a horizontal line for the placket um, the shirt has two layers of if you see it has two layers of ruffles and pleats like I said there's a placket here um, it's multi-dimensional when we when we talk about we get to the next. We talk about implied. We'll talk about that, like the optical illusion that it that it creates. Um, but it's you know the actual existing space. We can say there is a straight line here and a curved line here along the along the shoulder um, seam. So those are are actual, right? Implied don't really exist. Implied are those things that are optical illusions, right? So for instance, do you have a shirt? that makes you look really slim, right? Do you have something in your in your closet that looks really slimming because it is fitted or it's tailored or it's sewn really well? So there's some additional lines in the construction that when there's eye movement on that garment makes it look like this, right? It gives you an hourglass shape or it gives you a slimming, a slimming, uh, slimming shape. So, um, you know, implied lies don't exist in space. Um, they're just created um, by our eyes looking um, at the components of the garment, but not seeing um, not seeing it as it's constructed. Right? It's um, you know, it's like the buttons in, in my placket. Right? It's really you see them, but you don't you don't see them. Or if something is really fitted, but you don't take into account all the pleating that is in it, you know, all the darts that are in it to make it to make it look um, as fitted. Think about something that you've seen that's been really well draped. I'm obsessed with watching draping videos on <laughs> YouTube. You see something that's really well draped, and those are implied lines, right? They're optical illusions. They don't actually exist. Don't actually exist in the space. So um, it's just created by that. It's created by your eyes going between the components of, of the garment. Okay. All right. So moving forward, um, we, we're going to talk about the formal qualities of line. And we've already talked about the two types. Uh, and next, we're going to talk about um, those formal qualities that can be described really in objective terms. So make sure you're taking notes here. Make sure you're taking notes here, okay, because there's a handful that I'm going to go over. First, I'm going to start with, I'm going to start with length. Right. So one of the qualities 
of line is the length, the length of the line. And it's exactly what you, what it implies, right? It is long or short. Um, and we have things, uh, in our, you know, in our, in our closet that, are, that we measure. I keep adjusting the camera and cutting my hair off or having, not having enough of my face in there. Um, you know, when our eyes perceive a line, we look at it in a measurable length. So again, we know there's a stop and an end point, and we look at it in measurable lengths of short or long or meandering, right? Um, so um, we have a tendency to follow a line from a beginning to an end. Like it's rare that we stop, that we stop in the middle. So, you know, uh, short choppy lines may break us up when we when we're here we're talking about body types right and you know long flowy lines may be more um, suited to certain body types right so those are things that we have to that we have to take in, into account the next um, thing in the next quality of line is width and lines can be either thick or thin and they can be thick or thin in the construction or in the terms of talking about a pattern. So if we talk about uh, a, a wide line in a pattern, we would talk about like a rugby stripe shirt, right? So rugby stripe shirts have really wide lines. And then if we were to talk about something that had a really thin line, we would maybe like a pinwell cord um, or a pinstripe that is, you know, really a, a, a succession of really, really thin lines. So um, it's really important that we also know that um, the width of a line also can go back to that actual or implied, implied to, okay? Um, the other thing is, um, the next quality is, you know, the uniformity, right? So that sameness of width and length of a line. And, you know, lines can be created out of the same thickness all the way around, or the thickness may change, or they may, um, you know, variate. So if we go back to um, our first... Oops, went too far. We go back to to this guy, right? Oh, sorry, to this gal. This, um, you know, the lines are of different of different widths, and they're not uniform, right? They they are um, they're variegated. So it's really important that we take that into consideration as well. Okay. Um, next, uh, the next quality, and this is really important, is the direction of the line, and you know. The, the direction moves your eyes in different manners. So there are horizontal lines that make you look, um, you know, um, horizontal, or vertical, or diagonal. So horizontal, you look right to left. Vertical, you look up and down. Diagonal, you look left to right or right to left. Um, there also are meandering lines. So um, I have a, a sheath dress that almost has like an S curve down the middle. It's two-tone, two different colors. So that meandering line that just changes direction um, any number of times, right? Any number of times. Uh, so a direction is really important um, when we talk about the quality of line as well. Um, and the last thing we're going to talk about when we talk about quality of lines is we're going to talk about... Um, about softness and hardness. They, they go hand in hand, right? Um, so lines can have a hard, easy to distinguish, sharp edge, or they could have a really indistinct edge, in, an indistinct ending. Um, you know, if we think about things that are um, cut in a bias, right? That's a really, a really soft line versus, um, you know, something that has a raw, a raw edge on it, which is really a really hard edge. So, um, so I'm going to stop this video, this part of the video here, and we're going to pick up because I'm at 14 minutes <laughs> and I, I hate to go even 14 minutes. I'm going to stop here and next we'll talk about the optical effects of the line and we'll go into some more of the qualities.